I uh, have to thank Arnaud for stepping in and to offer apologies uh, for Shlomo Baum, who uh, yesterday had to uh, cancel abruptly. He was very sorry to do that. I'm very grateful to Arnaud for uh, uh, stepping in. Um, Arnaud, we talked yesterday about um, uh, some um, two different possibilities of uh, reconciliation, and I'd uh, like you to um, share that with the, uh, with the audience and your position on reconciliation in general. First of all, the, the, the only um, date that, is, that was missing in, in, the review, in your initial review of the dates, that um, uh, the history of the reconciliation, the only one that was missing, and I think that that was the most substantial one, is the uh, 2000, March 2005 agreement between Fatah and Hamas, on which basically safeguarded the ceasefire and uh, uh, the launching of, of reconciliation, basically. Uh, there's been some engagement before, if you remember, in the 90s in Sudan and in other places, but this was the first time that such an agreement was publicly signed, and I think that the importance of this agreement is that for the first time, um, PLO did not um, give up its exclusivity over, over running or representing the Palestinian people. But in some way, this agreement have shown that it was, uh, um, at least publicly, uh, willing to share some of the burden with Hamas. Uh, I think that this is a substantial uh, date because um, um, I think it's, it reflects the, the basic tendency of the Palestinians, like any other nation, as, and especially the Israelis, to, to speak and to uh, support unity and reconciliation. I think that uh, you can call it even instinctive reconciliation, instinctive feeling that as long as the separation between Gaza and the West Bank is continuing, um, the more the damage is inflicted on, on the Palestinian cause and against the specific interests of the Palestinians. Uh, having said that, uh, and, and by the way, uh, uh, Gershon, your, your remark about Abu Mazen paying the salaries, I don't think that in, in the context of this agreement in 2005, I don't think that it's only a question of salaries. No, if Abu Mazen is disconnecting from Gaza, he is disconnecting from representing all the Palestinians. That's, uh, and, and if you actually ch check the facts, you'll see that ever since 2007, the PA is disconnecting from Gaza. In, in, in economical terms, they are reducing every year the amount of budget which is going to Gaza. So. So it's not it's 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 really more complicated than we think. But uh, but I think that as a principle, once the burden of representing the Palestinian cause is being distributed between Fatah and Hamas, okay, the strive and the the uh, 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 public position on reconciliation is is um, almost uh, magical. It's almost, it's not, it's not rational. It's, uh, it's uh, emotional and everybody uh, uh, is supporting it even without thinking of what does it mean or, or the implications of this. So I think that a good start for this discussion will be to try and put our finger on, on what is a, re a reconciliation. And I think that uh, in the early phases, um, I can say uh, up until the falling of the Mubarak regime in Egypt, the, there was only one type of reconciliation that was discussed uh, with, uh, between Fatah and Hamas. Uh, I call it a horizontal reconciliation, meaning that the uh, basic assumption of the negotiators, of everybody, was that uh, when you're talking about reconciliation, basically you are talking about bringing back Gaza and the West Bank into the same barrel, 
stirring it together and creating a diffusion, meaning reconstructing the, P the PA uh, in terms of ministries, in terms of uh, security services, in terms of uh, um, um, uh, public uh, institutions, in, ter in all, all the uh, uh, aspects of life, uh, including uh, issues that are related to, to the uh, external relations, like ceasefire and, and, and things like that. Um, I think that this horizontal uh, uh, reconciliation, um, which is meant to reunite those two entities, is was relevant up to the falling of the Mubarak regime. And I think that uh, uh, um, uh, the other type of reconciliation is uh, what I call a vertical reconciliation, which is basically an engagement bet between two separate entities. And, and, and this is a very principal difference. Uh, um, um, uh, when, I, when I speak about vertical uh, uh, reconciliation, I mean that Hamas and Fatah in the last uh, uh, um, years, basically, are negotiating uh, or tactically negotiating um, uh, issues that are uh, more or less expressions of some level of cooperation between those two entities, but they have stopped to speak about uh, uh, uniting institutions and uh, uniting se security services, uniting ministries. I think that this um, form of reconciliation has ceased to exist. Uh, uh, if you check, for example, the latest agreements of the Doha agreements and the latest um, uh, Cairo agreement, and you compare it to the Egyptian paper of 2009, which was, I don't know, 28 pages, okay, relatively to Doha ag agreement, which is maybe five, uh, uh, five um, lines, um, you can understand what I'm talking about. The Egyptian paper was talking about a, a, a whole revolution in the situation that was created after June tw 2007. And the Doha agreement is basically some kind of truce between Fatah and Hamas, a truce, a general truce, which is uh, not so, you know, not so detailed because every detail could have exploded everything. And, and, and basically it was, um, something which defines the rules of engagement between Gaza and the West Bank. In my mind, the first type of uh, reconciliation is, is practically no, no longer valid. It, is, it can be achieved, in my eyes, uh, in two main scenarios. One scenario is um, some type of, that you can call it catastrophe, to one of the entities. For example, the collapse of the uh, PA in the West Bank that, uh, that uh, Sofian was uh, describing, it's an option. Or, or it could have been created by a military occupation of Gaza by Israel in the last, uh, the last uh, operation. Uh, the second option for this to happen is if there was a viable um, uh, political process that was supported by regional forces. Let's, I can, if I have to imagine something, it could be something in the form of the Madrid process or the Madrid uh, International Conference or, or something like that that will impose on Fatah and Hamas a reconciliation that maybe in any other way is impossible to achieve. Uh, uh, the more likely scenario, in my eyes, is a continuation of the current situation in which every once in a while, Fatah and Hamas are agreeing on uh, ad hoc uh, um, um, understandings, you can call it. For example, after the, the last military operation, there was uh, a traveling of Jibril Rajub and uh, Arikat, Saib Arikat to Cairo, and in uh, uh, a matter of few meetings, they reached immediate understandings with Mashal and with Hamas, and, and, and they, right after that, we saw 
basically, uh, all these steps that uh, that uh, Sufyan described in the in the beginning of his words, basically releasing prisoners, uh, uh, demonstrations. Even now, they can agree on, uh, for example, a uh, uh, popular struggle in the West Bank. It, it's uh, uh, there is no reason they can't agree on that without relating to all the other uh, components of reconciliation. Uh, uh, and, and I think that that the circumstances will will um, uh, will lead them in that direction. Um, uh, a word in the direction of, of uh, Abu Mazen. Uh, I think that uh, ever since all, all the last four years um, of Abu Mazen having to to deal with the Israeli right wing government in Israel, I think that uh, from an early st er, er, from the uh, early stage of these relations, it was clear that. Uh, there is no viable engagement between the parties and nothing is going anywhere. So I think that from his point of view, uh, if I have to overview now or in retrospect, what, what was he doing basically? I think that what he did, he crystallized uh, a policy based on four main tracks, okay, four, four main lanes that uh, on he, he, he one of them is the negotiations. The second is the uh, um, international steps, like going to the UN uh, uh, and so forth. The third was the popular struggle. And the uh, fourth was the reconciliation. I think, to my, my modest opinion, is that uh, basically Abu Mazen, because he understood that there is no viable political process, he had to maneuver between those four lanes during all the last four years in order to survive. So that means that he basically jumped from one track to the, to the next. Um, uh, but he never, he was never able to conclude each of them. Uh, so, so you saw it for some time, you saw, uh, you saw him going for uh, proximity talks and then jumping to the uh, uh, UN bids uh, last year and this year. Uh, then he jumped to, to um, popular struggle. And then he, and from time to time, he was also jumping to the reconciliation. The reconciliation in this context is no more than um, a tactical uh, maneuver in order to um, portray or to give the public, which is really interested in, in reconciliation, the feeling that that the leadership is not uh, um, abandoning this uh, uh, track to completely. In my eyes, in the foreseeable future, the option that he will conclude the, the option of reconciliation, meaning that he will go all the way to elections of the PNC, of the Palestinian National Council, uh, parallel to the other types of elections, I think that this is a far-fetched uh, uh, option in the foreseeable future. And, and I think that um, in the same way, um, we are going to keep on seeing the, uh, the position of the two organizations. Hamas will continue to think Gaza is mine and I'm, play, I'm trying to play in the West Bank, and Fatah in the same way, we'll control the West Bank and try to play in Gaza. And, and I think that this, will, this situation will continue. Thank you very much, Anon.